Alright, in this video I'm just going to show you a recent project of mine in which I have an automated safe. So down here I have a little wooden box that's completely sealed off, bolted shut, and the only way to get into it, actually there's two ways, you can open it up with a key, but you can also open it up via wireless keypad. So if we push the button and type the code in, press enter, the safe automatically opens and I keep my my firearm here with all my ammo and sometimes I keep some uh, personal items in there like money or whatever and also what you can do here is when you shut it it automatically lock relocks itself okay now I'm not going to go into the specifics on how to build this because all of my previous videos talk about everything that's here for instance I made a video about the keypad, but how do you make it wireless? I made a video on the RF, those cheap RF link modules. So take a look at that, and that's how you build this. Let's open it up and see what else is going on in there. Okay, let's move this out of the way. Now, let's see what's going on inside here. I'm going to have to hold the camera, things are probably going to get a little jerky. Okay, so what we have down inside there, so what we have down inside there is a little door lock module that you'd find inside your car, and that runs on 12 volts. So I used relays to control that 12 volt uh, solenoid. We also have another RF link module in there. And we also have a limit switch way in the back there in that bottom right corner so that when I'm shutting the drawer, it reactivates the lock. And let me show you that. I'm going to push it with my hand. You see how it shuts like that? And then if we go to hit open again, let's see if we can show you that pressing the code in. You see, so it's a very simple design. Now on the front here, we can also use a key just in case we lose power for any reason to open this up. And it's just a standard little uh, key lock I got at Home Depot. And then this piece right here slides in front of that. So if I needed to wirelessly unlock it, it just slips that and it slips out of that little notch there. Okay, so it's a very simple design and then I have magnets on both sides to debounce the circuit because it was, it, ha it hits so hard that sometimes it bounces out of position. Uh, and you know what, I don't wanna go too long in this video but I'll try to show you one more thing. I actually ended up Velcroing it shut on there because it was falling so much so there's all of the relays, there's your Arduino standalone, which I also have a video on. There's the wireless module with the antenna. We have a giant capacitor, which I'm going to show you in a second, the reason for why we do that. And we have a little voltage regulator. Okay, so there's a couple things I wanted to... Oops, I got to... So there's a couple things I want to talk about real quick on here. And that's how to control and reverse that solenoid because you need to change polarity on it to do that. So let's go over here. I know this is kind of a sloppy video, but... Okay, so here's how we control the motor with relays. Okay, let's call it M1. We have your positive 12 volts and you have ground. So you have 0 volts, 12 volts. Check out my relay video on how to work with relays, but we'll talk about that too. Okay, so to make the solenoid go in one direction, we have to apply po positive, negative, but to make it go in the other direction, we need to, we need to switch this to negative, positive. So how do we do that? Because you can't really flip polarity in the Arduino. It's either things are either zero or five volts, right? 
So we do this all with relays. So we do it like this. Let's say this is R1, and then we'll have a coil down here. Let's show you this. So we also have your 5 volt line to control the relays. And let's just make a button there for now. And that'll be R1. So when I push this button down, the solenoid will go in one direction. But how do we flip directions? Well, we have a second relay, which does something like this. Oops, a little too forward there. Which does something like this, and we'll call this R2, R2. So when we, we'll say we have the same exact circuit below this, and we'll, that controls an R2 relay coil. And these are relay coils which control these contacts. So when I push down the button again for R2, this closes and this closes, so now your polarity is plus 12 volts here and then 0 volts over here. Okay, so that's how this whole circuit works, and that's why I have... Well, you see here there's only two relays, really, R2, R2, R1, R1. But, unfortunately, I could not find a double pole relay. So I had to use two single pole relays to control that, which is re the reason I have four relays. Because, um, so you have, a, uh, because a single pole looks something like uh, this, right? You have your normally closed, normally open. That's one pole doing, it, doing that. Where this right here, if you looked at it, because when you look at the schematic for these relays, you'll see it drawing something like this. And uh, so when you look at the... Uh, schematic and you see this contact here that's the normally open which was these contacts I was drawing earlier and it closes that okay and when you apply a voltage to the coil which will look something like that in the schematic which I was drawing like this it brings that close check out my videos on the uh, relays for more information about that but anyways that was just a cool little project I thought I'd share with you thanks for watching